What's up everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I wanna to go ahead and talk to you guys about two things that I get pretty often on Instagram and YouTube. And I've pulled my computer up and rather than talking to this camera for 10 minutes and doing the figurehead thing, the talking head, uh, I'm basically gonna pull up some clips and go into detail about two things. One, the first thing, one of the most common questions I get is, um, where are you fishing? But I'm not gonna talk about that. Instead, I'm gonna talk about uh, what you guys, the other probably second most common question I get is, why do I choose a three weight rod or why a graphite might be a better option as opposed to glass? A lot of guys always ask, they're like, hey man, you see small streams? I feel like, you know, glass is a better option and I'm not knocking glass. I just don't necessarily know that it fits every situation that I find myself in. So if I'm picking one tool, I'm gonna go with uh, graphite and I'm gonna go into a lot of detail, pull up some clips, walk through those from start to finish, from past trips and show you basically, as opposed to tell you why I choose that, that type of rod. Uh, in the end of the video, I'm gonna go into my nymphing setup. I, the other question I get pretty often is, uh, you know, walk us through how you set up your rig, right? When you, you're not shot, uh, where you place your nymphs and, you know, maybe your your, uh, your indicator setup. So I have a dedicated video to nymphing and I have a dedicated video to uh, walking through a run, basically breaking that down. So you wanna find those in my tip video, as well as a, a video that basically covers all the indicators that I use. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on that. This on this one. I'm basically just gonna pull out uh, a leader and just set it up for you so you can see exactly how I do, like the you know the length of the leader, length of tibet, first fly, how far between my knot and my first fly, and then if I drop from the eye, I drop from the bend, and the reasons why I would do that. So that's what this video is gonna be about. I'm gonna throw the intro up right now and cue some videos, and we're gonna get into it. Okay, so one of the most important things for me about a graphite rod is I don't always know the type of water I'm gonna find myself in. When I look at a map, I just show up to a stream. Sometimes I hike in, sometimes the canopy blocks the view I can't really see. So I'm looking for one rod that I can confidently take with me in a backpacking, hiking, overnight, you know, 2,000 mile trip someplace, and that's what this has become for me. So it could be big water, small water, uh, tiny water, just like you're seeing here, and I feel like I'm, I'm covered for anything that I'm gonna do. And I think that's really important to me because I want to have, I'm talking about a tool, which is what we're talking about with the rod. I need one tool that accomplishes a lot of tasks really, really well. So that's what I'm doing here. So let me pull up another clip. And like I said, when, sometimes when I show up to a stream, I don't really know what I'm going to find myself in. And this is one of those, this is from my Womanish backpacking trip. And this is all the same stream. You can kind of tell it's a lot of different water. It's broken up. There's some, some heavy flow. There's some pocket water. There's some shallow ripples. Again, I took my three weight and my four weight and ended up fishing my three weight most because it covered all the water. My four weight was a 10 foot rod. It's a little bit too big uh, to get in to some of those tight cover situations. But my three weight, I didn't have a problem fishing it because it had enough backbone and um, I was able to change up tactics and stuff, which I'll talk about later. But I was able to fish this three weight in kind of heavy water uh, and move around and fish the stream pretty effectively. Um, I talked about backbone, this is kind of important you kind of see right now as fish gets below me. The next clip I'll show you why I really don't mind. This is definitely four weight water to me, but I have a three weight that has the backbone of a four weight pretty much. And I'm able to, you know, this is a good fish. Cast over the, the limb there, he eats and immediately, you know, there's a lot of flow here, a lot of stuff in the water he can wrap around. He gets below me a little bit and I'm able to put the brakes on, get him turned around uh, and, and start moving him to the, the shallow side of the, this, this creek and get him into a position where I can actually play him as opposed to getting played. Immediately, like when he ate, he started coming downstream. The current was pushing him. He was fighting and rolling, but I'm able to get, you know, get some control of the situation and get this fish in the net. Funny story about this fish. Um, at some point in time when I was walking through the brush, I guess I snagged my net and I'm kind of like just a bull in a china shop sometimes. I just kind of ran through it and I guess I tore a hole in my net. Well, as I was trying to get this fish on the camera and get the camera situated so I could get a good release, uh, he kind of just self-released himself through one of the holes in the net. So it was kind of funny. Um, like I said, I'll throw that link to that video up in the up here and you guys can check that out if you want that was that was a cool trip um it's going to lead me into my next topic though which is probably the most important part of all this for me and that's the ability to change tactics and fish a ton of different variety um in the same in the same stream so this is from colorado as well and i'm fishing uh it's the same stream like i said and i'm going to illustrate here is how i go and basically change tactics as the day goes on early on i'm fishing the dry dropper uh, the fish weren't looking up, they weren't cooperating, they didn't want to eat a dry fly, so I threw on a dropper. As I moved through the day, I started seeing, you know, finding this big, you know, holes, and I started thinking, you know, 
should probably fish these holes a little bit better. So for me, being able to switch up and fish deep holes is really, really important. So that's what I do. I'm gonna cut off, uh, let myself explain what's going on. All right, so I found this pretty hole, super deep. I just can't, I drifted through there a couple times with a dry fly and a dropper. Didn't see anything, nothing at the dropper, so I'm gonna switch up, nymph this hole. I, I just can't imagine. There's not a good fish sitting on the bottom there, so we'll figure it out, see what happens. So I cut my nymphs off, cut the drop off, throw on a pinch on indicator. This is what I consider light nymphing. Uh, so I'm gonna, you know, the Pertagon was still on my top fly, throwing an unweighted fly on the bottom, a little bit of shot, and I was throwing a pinch on indicator, and I was able to fish and effectively nymph this hole, which is important to me. Uh, if you saw the clip, that video, which I'll throw the link up in here as well, I catch a bunch of fish out of this hole. Uh, it was a really productive hole, and I'd thrown through my dry fly and thrown my dropper through there a couple times, didn't catch anything. So being able to switch up and, and effectively nymph this hole was super important to me. So like I said, that's uh, so far I've switched up twice. You know, continuing to move on through this stream, I'm gonna show you what I do next. As the day goes on, more bugs. I think you can probably see a couple, uh, you know, kind of see some, some bugs falling out of the sky right there, some caddis. The dry fly bite is just about to start picking up. So this is probably the last hole that I nymphed, which is really important because like I said, uh, the graphite rod allows me to switch up techniques as the day goes on. So the next series of clips you're gonna see will be me switching off. I cut the nymph rig off, cut the dry dropper rig off, and I go straight to throwing dry flies. And I spend the last probably, this was around lunchtime, so the rest, that last half of the day, I just threw dry flies and I caught a ton of fish and had a great time. Um, and like, this is it right here. This is probably one of the earlier fish as the fish started rising. I saw this fish on the other side of this seam here uh, and threw my dry fly and you know cut everything off and started throwing dries and had a super day. But like I said, one rod, three different techniques. Uh, I'm gonna show you a fourth one later, which is still nymphing, but it's a heavy nymph setup and it was in Missouri. Uh, and again, I'll show, I'll link that clip up here. Um, if you wanna see that, that was the Missouri trout slam. But this is, uh, this is a deep hole, fast water, and I throw on an airlock with a ton of shot and some beadhead flies because I had to get down quick. Uh, the casting's not super pretty here, but that graphite rod holds up to uh, heavy nymph rigs, which is important to me. So I've shown you four different techniques, um, dry dropper, just traditional light nymphing, dry fly fishing, and heavy nymphing. So I could also throw small streamers. I could have fished that hole back there before with the small stream, I've done that before. So I'd say that's five techniques uh, that this rod does pretty effectively. So let's stop and talk about presentation. A lot of times people believe that glass is more uh, in line with better presentation, and I don't necessarily believe that anymore. I think maybe back in the day that's the case, but I think the way we've come with graphite rods, I don't necessarily know if that's, that's true anymore. And I'm gonna show you two clips where I'm able to, you know, this is a shallow crystal, you know, it's a spring creek, shallow water, crystal clear water. These are wild rainbows, and I'm fishing dry flies. I don't feel like my presentation sucks here. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty on point. Um, and I'll show you another one after this clip. We'll get to the San Juan River in New Mexico and the same thing. These are, you know, educated fish and I'm throwing small dry flies uh, and, and catching some really, you know, some pretty browns and rainbows there. We'll go ahead and get this fish in. Like I said, I think this was a size 16 or a size 18 caddis. But here's me in the San Juan. This is back in March. Uh, just throwing small little midges. And eventually I'll pause this clip and show you the bugs so you can kind of see um, about how small we're talking about. But, I mean, presentation is... I'm not sacrificing presentation here. This is my four weight. Release this fish. I show that, that little small, little midge. Um, it's like a size 22 or size 24. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about today uh, is accuracy. Um, because graphite is super accurate. Like I can, doesn't have a lot of flex in it, so it maintains its path. And I can put, I can pick up and drop flies in some tight places because of it. And I'm gonna show you a clip here, like I'm able to, got two of them back to back. Um, but I've, if you've watched my videos, again, this is this is from Wyoming. Uh, I'll link that in the description uh, and put it up here on the top as well. But you guys can see, like I'm able to get, you know, a little small dry fly in the, in the corner pocket there. Same thing over here. I'm gonna move close and I'm basically gonna just drop a fly underneath some cover over there and find a, a beautiful brook trout. So I do wanna talk about, um, I didn't wanna make this video about the the length of the rod, but I do prefer a seven and a half foot. Go ahead and mention it because for one, I can get over cover, like I've shown here in this tight brush. Um, basically, it's pretty packed on all sides, but I can also get under. And I'll show you the the next clip I get underneath. And this was uh, from the Driftless. Same thing. Small streams, pretty uh, pretty congested. Lots of brush, lots of things to grab your flies and break your line. Um, lots of places for fish to go and get tangled up. Um, it's nice to have some backbone to move fish out of the way and keep them from working their way into 
some messes and you know here I'm able to get underneath all that and I find a, uh, a wild brown pretty fish so I gotta be fair and tell you that the one thing that I noticed more than anything else with graphite um, that is definitely the inability for it to load really fast and this is a great example of what I'm talking about I'm probably 12 to 15 feet away from where I'm casting and it takes me three false casts to get out that's because it just takes that much time to load the rod, right? I mean, it just doesn't load quick. It's also one of the reasons why it doesn't roll cast really great. It roll casts fine. It just doesn't have the same feel and touch that a glass rod has. It. So I get that. Um, but all said and done, if I'm picking a rod for any any type of trip I'm taking, any place I'm going to go, and I haven't seen the stream and I don't have, I'm not really comfortable with what I'm going to be finding, I'm going to go with graphite. Okay guys, so I uh, told you guys I would walk through my leader setup um, at the end of this video. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Um, and what I've done, pre-tied, just basically built like a mock leader, if you will, um, and just kind of shorten it so I could get it on the camera because I'm kind of working with a limited amount of space here. But uh, this is my go-to system for uh, nymphing. Uh, let's just get into it. Um, my favorite uh, leaders right now um, are nine foot, two X uh, tapered knotless leaders. Uh, the reason I go with Nautilus, and I've said this in my indicator videos, because most of my indicators slide up and down the leader, and it's important to me not to have knots in there. It doesn't mean that I don't cut in, because I do all the time. Uh, the first thing I'll talk about the leader development, I don't have a go-to system. I start off like this, and then if the situation, like in my video, I that clip I showed you earlier, if it happens, it comes up, and I need to cut in, I cut in quickly and change up the system. And then uh, Dorsey indicators, if you use the rubber band, like they, if you... You can manipulate them enough, you can get them to slide over the knots. Um, airlocks don't do as well on that, which is why I kind of stick with uh, Dorsey's as much as possible. But anyway, let's talk about the leader in general. So, so we got nine foot, two X. I do a blood knot or I do a tippet ring here, and this is gonna be where my connection to three X is. And for demonstration purposes, I've kind of shortened this a little bit just to get it on the camera. But I usually go with say, you know, a foot to a foot and a half, whatever. Um, it's going to give me nine. That's going to give me down to about ten and a half foot, uh, somewhere between ten and ten, ten, and, somewhere between ten and ten and a half foot. Let me try to be clear on that. Uh, at that point, I do a Orvis tippet knot. It's a super easy knot to tie. It's easy to tie on the water. It's easy to tie when your hands are cold. Um, and then from there, I go to my first fly. And in this case, I've used uh, about fifteen inches of four X. Uh, and the reason I do that is because I do a polymer knot at the eye of the first fly, which is a bead head. I always do a bead head on my top fly. I shouldn't say always, but a lot of times. Um, I don't think there's any always in fly fishing. Second fly is typically some type of unweighted. This is just a little caddis. Uh, it's a really cool pattern. Um, been really good for me, but not talking about flies today. We're talking about leader tippet setup. So there you got it. Tippet ring or tippet knot, or tippet knot. First fly is a bead head. 10 inches down below that. Second fly, that's a killer nymphing setup. So, where I place my shot, let me disconnect this. So on the 3X or wherever you have that's connecting your tippet to your first fly, the shot goes above the knot on the first fly. So there's my first fly down here by my thumb. It's a bead head and I've added, that's the Orvis tippet knot. And I have a, you know, I feel like I'm staring at the camera that's staring at me, that's staring at the shot. So I feel kind of stupid, but anyway, that's where my shot's at, it's above the tip and knot. Uh, in this case, that's where I always put it. This time it's on 3X, but a lot of times I'll add 3X and then I'll add 4X. And if I'm going to 5X, I'll add the tip and knot. My over tip and knot will be the connection between the 4X and the 5X. The 5X will go to my first fly. You just kind of kind of work with what you're doing. And in that case, like I just shorten everything just a little bit. So it might be a foot of 3X, a foot of 4X, and then like 10 inches of 5X just to get a, a nice little seam. And I'm not, I don't have any like super long section of like 3x or 4x and then like little you know sections of 4x and 5x after that hope that makes sense i know uh, sometimes it can you know there's a lot of information out there but um let's talk about shot um because this is the part where i think that um kind of like indicators you need to have a lot of a lot of uh, a variety in your pack uh, there's not really one type of shot so i'm going to show you the types of shot that i use and i change it up a lot so i, I have you know typical just small bb lead shot this is great for um, just general nymphing, like it's you know kind of kind of slack water or water that's kind of not got a lot of flow to it, so you're not dropping like chunks of lead in the water. It's just kind of like clunk clunk, and you're just throwing fish. This when you have time for your your setup to sink by itself, 
uh, you don't have to add a lot of weight. You just need a little bit to kind of help it get down. Um, with that said, there's a lot of times you've seen me fish in really heavy flow. And I use some chunk lead at that point in time. Let me pull out a couple of these. So this is just big AA, you know, AV, just, you know, tons of chunk. Basically, it's just, it's just heavy lead that I, th or, you know, I think this might be 10, but either way, um, it gets down quick. It's just there basically sink anything that's uh, that's attached to it. So don't get don't get tangled up in it. Um, from there, I got some number six. Same thing. This is all removable um, and allows me to add on and take and subtract shot as I need it. Uh, number four, I have some number some number nine in there somewhere. Um, and then the last thing I like to use every now and then I use putty. Don't like putty as much. This is old and maybe it's changed, but putty doesn't seem to stay on my on my on my line as well as you know like traditional like removable shot. Um, I like to do this with if I'm fishing like a um, an emerger and sometimes it just doesn't get down really well, you can put a little bit of this on your leader just above that and it'll add, it'll help it get down just below the surface um, if you have flies that just don't sink as well. Like sometimes the hooks are just a little bit light and they don't pull them down. But that's the that's my solution for doing that. But I don't use it very often um, just because it's not, I haven't had a lot of success with it. I know other people do. Not discouraging it. It's not really, this is not a review on shot. It's just telling you kind of the stuff I, that I use. If you need more detail about like nymphing, Check out the, the nymphing video. I'll, put, I'll post the link to there and I'll put it up here somewhere wherever that stuff pops up at. Um, but yeah, that pretty much has everything I had to do with the video. Um, hope you got something out of that. Hope I explained why I like graphite more than glass. Um, although I'm definitely not you know opposed to glass and hopefully I'll pick up one uh, as my budget uh, allows. But uh, yeah, if you got any more questions, make sure you leave those down below. I'll try to get to every one of those. And uh, yeah, pretty much done. Thanks for watching the video, guys.